to to share today really what has been some inner queries, contemplation, study, and journaling that was sparked by what Malika and Farhad offered in December. And so anyway, it I want to also note that what is being offered emanates from the light of the Sufi message of Hazrat Amaya Khan, from the light of my Murshida, Nuria Sabato, and all the Murshids, Murshidas, and spiritual teachers that she has guided me to. So I felt when Malika was sharing this morning that we're, we're drawing in all of our teachers into this circle with us. In December, Malika shared the practice Nur Allah, which means is that, that God is the light of the heavens and the earth. But in the Physicians of the Heart, it also says about Nur that Nur is the essence of light, luminosity itself. And I really liked this phrase. Nor is the light of every soul. An inherent characteristic in every pore of your body. So remember this when we share the practice to come. So Malika also offered readings from Prayer of the Heart by Llewellyn Von Lee. And I got so excited about some of the passages she shared that I bought the book to return to some of those passages and read them again. So from this text, a passage about this light. At the center of our being is a point of nothingness which is untouched by sin and illusion. A point of pure truth a point or spark which belongs only to God, which is inaccessible to the fantasies of our own mind or the brutalities of our own will. This little point of nothingness is the pure glory of God written within us, our sonship. Now here, sonship is spelled S-O-N-ship, but today we might also think of this as S-U-N-ship, our sonship. It is like a pure diamond blazing with the invisible light of heaven. It is in everybody, and if we could only see it, we would see these billions of points of light coming together in the face and blaze of a sun that would make all the darkness of light vanish completely. So I was, wow, when I heard that. I really lit up inside with these words. So the practice we are preparing for guides us to access this point this spark within us that is untouched by illusion. The mind mesh we heard about from the readings and also today's bowl of sake, which Mershid Sam called this the mind mesh. And the ego is another term for it, which Luan Van Lee speaks to in Prayer of the Heart, saying, the ego stands firmly between the seeker and the light that is hidden within. It blocks us from the influence, guidance, and help that come from the soul. So these passages further kindled the flame of my own spiritual practices, the purification breaths. And these were presented to me, the purification breaths, by Murshid Hidayat Inayat Khan and have developed with the guidance of Murshid Anuria Sabato. And we'll do this practice as it was given by Pira Murshid Inayat Khan to his Murids during his lifetime. 
Life and light is prevalent in his teachings. And so this practice that we're going to do is with a concentration upon the light of the sun. A rhythmic breath. And on the rhythmic breath, placing the phrase, I inhale divine light and light. And on the exhalation, I radiate divine life and light. And he speaks of this life and light in the secret of spirit saying, spirit is the source and the goal of all things, something towards which all are bound, to which all will return. It is that spirit which in religion is called God. And the best way of explaining this meaning of spirit is that it is like the sun, the center of all life, the divine spark in us. Our S-U-N, sonship. Before we do the practice, he also advises, breath is life and light, and in the breath is the source of life and light. In mastery of the breath, the secret of both worlds is hidden. So note the word mastery. Mastery of the breath, our Sufi practice. This is what helps us discover that secret that is so important in our inner life and in our outer life. So we'll do the purification breaths as instructed by Piro Murshid and Nayat Khan at a summer school in Europe in 1925. And at the same time, we might bring into our circle and remember all those ancient Sufis who did this practice of drawing the light within to identify with that pure glory of God, that pure truth. So we're not outdoors, and typically, Marcia recommends that we do this in fresh air, facing the direction of the sun. And we can do that in our, you know, in other settings. But today we can we can also imagine this. We have light around us. And we can see that light through the windows. And we also know that the rays of the light of the sun are within the atmosphere, within the air around us. And we can visualize this. So <clears throat> imagine, we can imagine the sun before us. And we look at that sun. And we can do this standing or do this sitting. It's either way. Typically, one might stand and do this. So it's, it's to your preference. We always stand also because it helps with the breath. <laughs> and if you want to look outside for a moment and just connect with the sun and draw those rays of light. Now, if we were looking directly at the sun, I remember learning from Pure Delight and Naya Khan in doing a light practice to gently close the eyelids just so you have a soft glance. And this protects our eyes of the sun <coughs> from the sun, but allows us to see the filtered light of the sun when we're doing this practice. And here we can close our eyes visualize how does this light appear to us as we close our eyes. Perhaps we see rays of white light. Perhaps we see the colors of the spectrum of light. Perhaps we see effervescent bubbles of light. Whatever form that light exists for you, breathe that in. 
breathe that in through the pores of your body and allow it to travel inward. Imagine rays of light coming together, centralizing at a point the face of the sun in the spiritual heart center. Now, Pura Murshidamaya Khan describes this heart center as the solar plexus. It's the region below the physical heart and just above the navel. So we're drawing that light into that center. And when we do this, we're also inhaling and saying, I inhale divine light and light. And as we exhale, we silently say, I radiate divine life. It's reversed here. Life and light. And we radiate that light from that spiritual heart center through all the pores of our body. So we can use this visualization as we do this practice to a series of breaths which are also given and known as the elemental breaths. However, in this concentration, the practice focuses upon light. And as Puro Murshid advises, on receiving and radiating the divine power in space, which purifies and revivifies and which inspires and enables soul to unfold. So we begin concentrating upon this light and we inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose. And as we inhale through the nose, we inhale divine light and light. Exhale, I radiate divine life and light. Inhale, I inhale divine light and light. Exhale, I radiate divine light and light. Do it, continue silently. And we proceed to the second breath, which is inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the mouth as if there is a straw between our lips and we're gently blowing our breath through that straw. We inhale through the nose. I inhale divine light and light. <coughs> Exhale through the mouth. I radiate divine life and light. Continue. And we proceed to the third breath, which is in through the mouth as it's sipping through the straw, just a small little <coughs> bit between the lips, and exhaling through the nose. Inhaling through the mouth, I inhale divine light and life. Exhale. 
exhaling through the nose, I radiate divine life and light. And we proceed to the fourth breath, which is in through the mouth and out through the mouth. Inhaling, I inhale divine light and life. And exhaling through the nose, I radiate divine life and light. Now the fifth breath is a very refined breath in through the nose and out through the nose. We've been purifying with these breaths. And on this breath, we place the prayer nyans by pure worship in Naya Khan. And in this prayer, we will use the words me and I. When we are offering this prayer, we are praying for ourselves that we may access this divine spark within, that we may purify and become illuminated with divine light and life. And at the same time, we are praying for ourselves we are also praying for others, for all the souls united in this light of the all-pervading life. So we begin this prayer. And this is done with the rhythm of inhalations and exhalations. So we say the prayer silently within, but we inhale, Beloved Lord, Almighty God, exhale through the rays of the sun. Inhale through the waves of the air. Exhale through the all-pervading light in space. Inhale, purify and revivify me. We hold the breath. And I pray, exhale, heal my body, heart, and soul. One more time. Inhale, beloved Lord, almighty God. Exhale, through the rays of the sun. Inhale, through the waves of the air. Exhale through the all-pervading life in space. Inhale, purify and revivify me. Hold and I pray. Exhale, heal my body, heart, and soul. So we can sit quietly again.
So while in this atmosphere, imagine that we are with Piero Murshid and Nayak Khan as he speaks to me reads in London on Sufi mystic philosophy, advising, Purification is most essential for Murid, for on this his or her progress depends, and all delays and failures on the journey towards the goal are caused by its neglect. So as we are inhaling the breath of life and life into our bodies, it awakens our muscles, our organs, it revivifies our cells with thy vitality. And within the prayer, Nayaz, we are praying not only for the purification of our body, but for the purification of our heart, which in Piro Murshid's teachings, heart and mind are one. They operate as one. What are we purifying our heart and mind of? Piramrishi reveals this speaking on mental purification. People can be well in their bodies, but not in their minds. Very often they hold on to an illness which they could get rid of. And the same thing happens with misery. People who are conscious of misery attract miseries. They are their own misery. It is not that misfortune is interested in them, but that they are interested in misfortune. They hold that thought, and that thought becomes their own. So in my own life, I have come to recognize this, and I think it relates to some of our rules also. But the negative impressions that we may receive from others or may have of ourselves, the disharmonious thoughts we might hold towards ourselves, or the disharmonious thoughts we might have towards others, this is what we're working on and purifying. And, you know, I know from my own experience that if I get stuck in those thoughts, it just carries me further down that slope to deeper frustration and deeper self-misery. So in those moments, I'm definitely not feeling the life and light. So there is that side. I mean, we have to recognize there's that side for us. But does anyone else have these experiences? Because sometimes you sit and think, is this just me going through this? Or, <laughs> you know, I have to own my own darkness. It's there. And so I share this practice because for me, it has really helped with working with myself and recognizing myself and developing my conscientiousness. Mershit's teachings have really helped me and this practice. And so I can, I, I testify, I've seen transformation take place within myself by doing this practice. I won't say it happened quickly, and I won't say that it's been easy. It's, it's a challenge to look at one's self, I think, in this practice. But I can say that I recognized my own negativity and maybe tendency towards pessimism. And I can really feel that that has been revivified with hope, optimism, and an accessible inner joy with this practice. And so, again, it's taken time. I won't say that I've mastered it. There's still a lot of work to be done. But it has lift, uplifted me and really helped me also through these past years of the pandemic and all the different conditions of what's taking place in our world. Because sometimes in the midst of all of that, it's hard to feel hopeful, to feel positive. And so this is why this has been shared. And with these teachings, 
a deeper understanding of the profound potential within this practice is revealed. In Mental Purification on Unlearning, Piro Murshidanaya Khan speaks to this. A field of mental purification is to identify oneself with what one is not. By this, one purifies one's mind from impressions of one's own false identity. All the difficulty in our life is that we cannot come out of a false conception. This passage had me pondering the iron rule that Farhad shared in December that just stuck with me. I thought, I gotta think about this one. Make no false claims. Because that can have so many meanings. But what does it mean in relation to my Sufi, my Sufi study and practice? That make no false claims. So false meaning not of truth, but it also means meant to deceive. And this, Piero Mersh is reminding us, to be aware of this. This is our ego. Our ego loves to operate in many ways to serve itself and to deceive or mislead us, to cloud that light of the pure truth of who we really are. Returning to Sufi mystic philosophy, purification of the soul depends upon knowledge of the divine. No matter how pious a person may be, they can neither advance nor improve until their soul is purified of the ego, which always tends to draw back and to hinder its advance. So this is what we are doing with purification we face the sun and identify with light and life. So the clouds that darken the pure light of our soul are, as we pray in the prayer of peer, by Hagra Nayakam, scattered by thy piercing glance. All ignorance vanishes in thy illuminating presence. Light and light. He encourages us with these words, saying, the divine message is the answer to the cry of souls, individually and collectively. The divine message is life and light. The sun does not teach anything, but in its light, we learn to know all things. The sun does not cultivate the ground, nor does it sow seed, but it helps the plant to grow to flower and to bear fruit. So this is the purpose of the purification breaths and the practices we receive from our spiritual teachers, those who are with us here in the physical body, as well as those from before and beyond, such as Pierre Murshid Anaya Khan, Murshid Samuel Lewis, I can add Pierre Valayat Anaya Khan, Murshid Hidayat Anaya Khan, any and all of our spiritual teachers are a part of this. So our practice is our opportunity to develop mastery of concentration and breath, to purify ourselves of this ego, that we may identify with the ideal divine light and light. And with the invocation, we turn towards the light of our spiritual teachers, the source of our spiritual heritage, when we say this invocation. And that source is divine light and life. We say toward the one, the perfection of love, harmony, and beauty, the only being united with all the illuminated souls who form the embodiment of the master. Now I want to pause a moment here with the word master. Because we know in our culture this word has negative <coughs> connotations. And so we've uh, 
adapted the invocation to include other words. But we might also consider that Hazrat Anayat Khan was of Indian descent. And in his time, in his culture, the master was the one who has attained mastery of concentration and breath. Mastery over the ego self, radiating pure light and truth. So it made me think of this word mastery. And I think I might have heard Malika say it because I was thinking about, and maybe I just heard it, <laughs> who, rather than who formed the embodiment of the master, we could also think who formed the embodiment of mastery. Did you say that? I do say that sometimes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I've been saying that myself, so I thought, oh, I think I heard somebody else say that. Because when we're saying mastery, we're also considering all those illuminated souls who offer us their example of this ideal divine life and might. Their example of uniting with the one who is untouched by illusion. So mastery. And we close the invocation by calling upon this, the spirit of guidance pure truth. And it makes me think of that phrase in Neptune. By divine light, which is hidden in our souls, that we may know and understand light.